When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. Of one of his supporters. White power. They're not sending you. I don't know why you hate us. Why do you hate us? Because we're Mexicans? We're honest people right here. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. Let me tell you something about this fucking, first of all, let me tell you something about, I know everybody, that's, Donald Trump, fuck that puto. Fuck him. Fuck him. In case there was any question, fuck him. Fuck him today, fuck him tomorrow, and fuck him three and a half years from now. And if you voted for him, fuck you today, fuck you tomorrow, and fuck you three years from now. First of all, Mexico, as in the government, is not sending anybody. So that's problem number one. But moving on. <laughs> Drugs coming in from Mexico is certainly a well-documented problem, oftentimes through underground tunnels. And experts say there is certainly an overlap between human and drug smuggling. But the vast majority of undocumented people caught at the border are nabbed on immigration charges, 89 percent, while drug trafficking charges account for just 5 percent, according to PolitiFact. Filipino, Asian people, Middle Eastern people, Indian people, Latinos, we all run the healthcare industry if you've been around a hospital. It also found that immigrants are underrepresented in California prisons compared to their representation in the overall population. In fact, U.S. born adult men are incarcerated at a rate of over two and a half times greater than that of foreign born men. Maybe not all of us are doctors, but we're the ones that are there in the middle of the night. When you're in there, my heart, my heart, this is the last thing you're going to see. The data doesn't at all support this categorical statement that undocumented immigrants from Mexico are responsible for large numbers of rapes. Why did you have to say they were rapists? When presented with contrary facts, Trump didn't back down when speaking with CNN's Don Lemon. Somebody's doing the raping, Don. I mean, you know, it, it's, I mean, somebody's doing the, just saying it's women being raped. She took her and she, I moved on her like a bitch, <laughs> but I couldn't get there, and she was married. And all of a sudden, I see her, she's now got the big phony tits and everything. She's totally changed her look. I better use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. I just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. You can do anything. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. <laughs> I can do anything. Pull the hell. I like Mexico. I love the Mexican people. I do business with the Mexican people. You! You liar! Uh, this is going all over the internet. You don't know who I am. You told her to, you told her to go back to her country where she's from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where were you born, bitch? I was born in America, bitch. Where are your ancestors from? You're They're not from this country. You're going back to Mexico. Bitch, you better go back you to where your you're from. You just, you just know. You just walked into it. Excuse me. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah, you deserved it. Oh, my God. In my opinion. Please. Please. Yeah, you, you pushed her and she smacked you. That was uh, self-defense on her part. You know what I'm scared of? UFC fighters. You know why? Because they're real. It is not a game, people. They are here. They exist. They know shit. Touch a pressure point, shut your whole body down. Bow. It's a wrap. All that. Can't move none of that. Fight back. Ah, I can't. It's... <laughs> Everything is shut down. I don't know what it did. Everything. I can't move anything. Right knee. It was early. Woke up. Went back to sleep. Took a nap. You ever go night night, nigga? You ever go night night, nigga? Everybody go night night, nigga. Competition if you are trying to rank the worst things they have done, the most damage they have done to our country and to the American experiment. Lots of competition. But here's the one. Here's the one where if you are a person who believes in hell, you have to think this is the one for which multiple Trump administration officials 
are most likely to spend eternity in cosmic penance and damnation. This is the one that'll be in the first paragraph of the obituaries of many different people in this administration, no matter how long they live and no matter what else they do with their lives. Because they will never do anything else as morally consequential as what they did here. And this is one thing that will never slide off of our conscience as a country. And this is something we, we first found out the specifics of below the fold on the front page of The New York Times on April 21st, 2018. Over 700 children taken from parents at the border. New York Times was first to report on 700 kids had been, who had been separated by policy from their parents after crossing the southern border. The White House had carefully guarded that number. They'd insisted that kids being taken away from their families, that was very rare. The number was actually very low. But it turns out it wasn't low. It was north of 700. And it turned out the White House had been keeping track. As of April 2018, more than 700 kids. And the contours of that story from there on out are, are familiar and still to this day almost unspeakably terrible. Right? Little kids taken away from their moms and dads. Babies and toddlers and teenagers taken from their moms and dads and sent to live in jail-like conditions, sleeping on the floor under space blankets by order of the federal government in the name of us, the American people. It, it was an, an early but unspeakably ugly chapter of this administration that will never be forgotten in history. But there's a part of the story we did not know until right now. Uh, this is new. It's from a book that comes out tomorrow that's called Separated, Inside an American Tragedy. It's a book written by my dear colleague, NBC News and MSNBC congressional, uh, correspondent Jacob Soboroff, who was on the forefront of reporting the child separation story. In this fairly stunning new book from Jacob, uh, he has broken news about what happened after the New York Times first reported on the list of kids the Trump administration was keeping to track how many of them had, had been taken apart, take, taken away from their parents. Uh, and this piece of the book is, is about a Trump official named Scott Lloyd. Scott Lloyd was in charge of keeping the list of kids who had been taken away from their parents. And for the first time, Jacob Soboroff reveals in his new book what happened when Scott Lloyd, this Trump administration official, saw his list, this list of the separated kids reported on the front page of the New York Times. This is how Jacob reports it in his new book. Quote, the reporting in the New York Times made Scott Lloyd irritated. He was left to stew about the leak over the weekend. Embarrassed, Scott Lloyd knew the leak came from his department on his watch under an administration that appointed him to his position. When considering how to handle the fallout from the leak, Lloyd's first thought was a drastic one. Quote, let's get rid of the list. If he followed the idea through, it would destroy the critical linkage between the 700 separated children in his custody and their parents. Despite the fact that the list itself was the best hope of ever reuniting them. Scott Lloyd knew that in order to discard the list, he'd have to instruct his staff to do so. Lloyd wanted to hear from them before deciding on a course of action. Once back in the office, he queried his staff. He asked them, quote, why are we keeping this list? Can't we just email with Department of Homeland Security on a case-by-case -case basis? You see the problem this created. How can we prevent another leak? He wanted to destroy the list because it looked bad, bad publicity might get him in trouble. Destroying that list would have made it nearly impossible for those kids to have ever been put back with their parents ever again. But you know, hey, maybe it would have made the story go away. The story obviously did not go away. Neither did the policy. The list of several hundreds of kids taken away from their parents turned into a list of several thousand. You might remember after all the public outcry and disgust about this policy, the Trump administration said, okay, yeah, fine, we'll stop doing that. They haven't actually stopped doing it. Since the quote unquote end of family separations, more than a thousand more kids have been taken away from their parents at the southern border and put into U.S. government custody in our name. And those are just the kids that we know about. The White House is not doing this in the open anymore. This time they're doing it quietly. Which is, of course, important to know just on its face, right? That taking little kids from their moms and dads is operational policy in this country. It's still in effect. But it's also important for another reason, one that Jacob smartly underlines in his new book. Part of that is that this whole idea was supposed to deter people from trying to emigrate into this country, right? Well, if you're doing it secretly, how exactly are you deterring them?
right? Even on its face in terms of your own explanation for this. If you were doing this secretly and trying to get away with it without people knowing about it, how exactly are you using this policy to keep people from coming into this country? Ginger Thompson is a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter who spent 15 years at the New York Times as an investigative reporter, as a Washington correspondent, as the Mexico City bureau chief. Uh, she's now at ProPublica. Uh, and she is the reporter who obtained the first recording today from inside a Customs and Border Patrol detention facility since the Trump administration started implementing this new policy of taking kids away from their parents, which they are now apparently doing at a rate of nearly 70 children per day. Thompson says she obtained this recording from a Texas lawyer who, in turn, says that she got it from a client who says it was recorded last week in a detention facility. Now, on this recording, you will hear kids crying here. You will hear kids crying for their mothers and their fathers. Uh, you will hear workers talking to them and trying to sort of figure out what to do with these kids. And you will also hear one very persistent, sort of heartbreakingly persistent, six-year-old girl from El Salvador uh, whom ProPublica has identified by name. Um, and what she is asking for here is for someone to please call her aunt. Uh, she's six years old. She has memorized her aunt's phone number, and she is trying to get an adult, any adult, to help her to call her family, to call the number she has memorized, because she knows, surely, she should be picked up. She should not be there alone. Thank you. 